Welcome to the Business LNK podcast. I am here in the AOI podcast studio at the Lincoln Chamber of Commerce, representing the Partnership for Economic Development. I'm Kathy Anderson, and I'm here with Diane Timmy, or Dr. Diane Timmy Stinton. How are you this morning? I'm great. Good, good. Um, Diane is the CEO and owner of TMCO, a high-tech manufacturing company here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, in 2023, they were recognized as Manufacturer of the Year in Nebraska. Uh, wonderful, wonderful things that TMCO and Diane does in our community. But today, we are here to talk about an entrepreneurial journey with Anchovy. And today is one month after the launch of Anchovy. Very exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's, there's, we're seeing press and in January, Anchovy was selected to pitch at Hy-Vee's Business Summit at the Scott Data Center. So uh, congratulations on all the early uh, momentum and what you're doing there. Oh, a little bit about what Anchovy is. It is a mobile software application, and it makes answering the question, what's for dinner, easy. So to do that, it delivers recipe importing, storage, sharing, and automated meal planning in one seamless platform. Anchovy leverages AI to deliver a recipe storage and meal planning solution that becomes tailored to the specific needs of your family the more you use the app. And uh, before we started recording, Diane and I were having a a nice conversation. can you uh, come back to that? Why is AI important? Why is it not just something you're leveraging, uh, you know, for your startup, but but important to the core of why you started Anchovy? Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you're you're starting up and you have an idea, um, a lot of times, um, you know, you think about catching the right wave at the right time, right? So the right idea, the right place, the right time, the right team, the right collaboration. So all of those things kind of come together when you're in a startup. And when we um, were just exploring um, the development of Anchovy, ChatGPT was just released. And then we were able to really see um, the potential for AI in the space. And so timing-wise, um, that felt like really, really, uh, really good. Um, I was reading an article and it's a great quote because now everybody's using it and nobody knows like who actually maybe said it first. Um, you can like post if you know. Um, but the, the quote was something like, um, you know, I want AI to do the laundry and dishes so I can do the writing and creative. I don't want it to do the writing and creative so that I can focus on my dishes and laundry. And so (laughs) it's really about using AI and leveraging AI as a tool to really simplify our lives. And that's such a tall order because the question of what's for dinner, like you said in in your kind of introduction, um, the reason why it really hasn't been solved yet is because number one, it's extremely personal and everybody does it a little bit differently. So one, one size fits all solution does not work. And secondly, um, it's such a complex issue, uh, all the things that go into figuring that question out. And mm-hmm. so um, we're really trying to make the most of AI to simplify and really improve the experiences of families. I love it. Thank you. And tell us about the leap. You mentioned the, the timing and thinking about going on this journey. What made you certain that you needed to solve this problem? Oh, boy. Um, That's really tough. I mean, like, I think there's a lot of, um, you know, ideating, I think entrepreneurs, you know, you, you have a lot of different thoughts at any time, like, um, I would say most of those thoughts (laughs) don't see the light of day. Um, But like, to to pick out those thoughts that you think, like, you know what, this really, this really has legs for me. um, Thinking about anchovy really was about solving a problem, you know, and a problem that, you know, why doesn't this solution like exist? So I was convinced that it already did exist somewhere. I was downloading other apps, other tools, Mm. uh, menu planning tools, um, food recipe apps. And I just, I didn't like the experience at all. And I came to the conclusion that maybe um, the vision in my head is just not 
out there. And then it's really that decision of, okay, like, am I, again, right place, right time? Am I equipped? Do I have the resources? Do I have, um, you know, the, the, the business know how and by then I was 10 years into my career, um, four years as CEO of TMCO. And um, just with the connections that I've been able to build through organizations like the chamber, um, you know, I feel like I, I had um, a great sense of, of business credibility behind me already that was in my favor. Yes. Um, and so, you know, but still, like, that leap of I have an idea to let's make it real is like so intimidating. And so um, I explored the idea in partnership with Don't Panic Labs um, in terms of what it was going to take in the in the creation. If you interview um, Don't Panic Labs at some point, they will tell you they thought this was like the worst idea on the planet uh. for like the first 30 minutes and were ready to talk me out of it. Um, but again, it's the timing with the AI technologies that, that makes this actually feasible and also very, very attractive. Excellent. Glad that you did line up all of those factors and that you created Anchovy. And you connected with Don't Panic Labs. And you did that hard work of, of that, you know, the process that they do with entrepreneurs. What else? Who did you talk to? What kind of resources did you tap into early in your journey? Yeah, so um, I mean, I I come from a little bit of a, a different position, uh, being the owner of TMCO. So I had um, some financial resources at my disposal. So um, I I own uh, Anchovy, and um, we currently uh, haven't taken any funding. So um, and that's kind of got us through the uh, the MVP um, and through launch. So uh, right now we're really about just, you know, uh, evangelizing the product and going out and getting users. Um, but before then, you know, it was really about um, you really have to think about the problem that you're trying to solve. And, and also thinking about this isn't a novel idea. Other people have done it. So why me? Why now? And also... Um, you know, you're thinking about the barriers uh, that people maybe have to using an app to downloading a new app and like um, a B2C uh, mass consumer app is like possibly the hardest market that mm. you'll find, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's so many apps out there, like millions and millions of apps. They all want your attention. We're in an attention economy. And so um, trying to break through in that space is like, it's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. And so the more, you know, we understand our customer, our users, we're able to optimize and deliver a really quality experience. Um, I think that's um, really very key to our success. And so really, it's talking about, um, you know, your your struggles um, around or pain points around uh, getting uh, a meal on the table. So it's really talking to, to peers and friends and, and really anybody <laughs> about what that process looks like and also eavesdrop on many conversations where all of a sudden if somebody says something like uh, food recipe dinner like my ears just like perk up I have like spidey sense now <laughs> <laughs> somebody's in line at the store and you're like oh what are they deciding you know how, what to cook for dinner yeah. oh totally but there's you know the thing is there's there's no judgment and I think like that's the other thing that I really want to get out there too um, is that um, you know, okay, so I have two small kids, four and one, and uh, we had Chick-fil-A, um, you know, last week, I, you know, finished work at six yesterday, well, I guess we're stopping at Chick-fil-A again. And, you know, I think we have to go with what works, you know, for us, you know, we're all different. And at the end of the day, you know, it's just it, it takes our attention away from things that are important. Like I literally stop what I'm doing at three o'clock every day to think about like, oh, what am I going to feel my feed my family? And I think just that working mom guilt, but anybody who prepares food for their family, you know, like if you if you somehow don't manage that, like you feel, you feel guilty, you feel like a bad spouse or partner. And I just think that we don't really talk about those things because we're obsessed with, you know, having it all together and letting everybody else see how all together that you have it. So the app is really also there to provide like a community and network of support. And I noticed on your website, you have a blog and you talk about some of those things and helping Absolutely. build that community. It's my place to, uh, <laughs> to vent about all these things. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. But we hope that, you know, um, it resonates with people because I feel like we, we're, we all have the same struggle. And at some point, you know, like in the evening, like you're going to have to figure out what you're going to eat. <laughs> it's true. Everyone has to. And 
as a uh, big user of anchovy yourself, have you um, had a lot of product discoveries or are you constantly talking to, uh, you know, development on we need to change this or this is going to be the next iteration of the product? Um, yeah, that's pr is part of the fun and part frustrating. I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many things because the technology is there. The the AI is there. It's capable of doing like so many different things. Um, now, the, the linchpin now is really getting that usership so that we um, become a uh, you know, revenue generating so that we're able to build out these features. So, I mean, like we have really, really big aspirations for anchovy. Um, we have a really great product right now. And um, it's really our hope that we do get the usership and the support. So we're able to continue building out like some really awesome things. Great. All right. Drive for more users. And you mentioned big hopes, big dreams for anchovy. What is this? Um, what's next? Or, or what are some of those dreams? Tell us more. Um, which one do you want today? Mm, yes. <laughs> um, one of my, my favorite ones, um, well, th there are a couple ones. Um, I've always been like very community minded. I think people know TMCO and me for some of the work that I've done um, around community. Um, but for example, um, you know, maybe partnering um, with uh, food banks, for example, and being able to um, release a version of the product that really takes into consideration, you know, like really cost effective um, nutritious uh, meals that people can, uh, you know, because the cost of living um, is increasing. I think, you know, like people are a little bit cash strapped. So to really facilitate that or um, also to be able to become a truly international worldwide app, um, it's really understanding food cultures around the world. Like food is a very, is a connector, um, but every culture does food a little bit differently. And so to be able to really respect the nuances. So for example, let's say you take a trip to Italy, right? You had an amazing um, focaccia and you want to somehow duplicate or replicate that experience here, right? So you get an Italian recipe. Recipe. Well, you know, in, you could put a recipe into Google Translate, but like it'll give you a literal translation. But for example, like the type of flour, like, okay, well, what is a good equivalent here? Where can you get that? Right. And so like, if we can really hack those things um, and create, uh, you know, those types of connections, um, you know, really, we have a worldwide product. There is no recipe or food app that has been able to manage a worldwide uh, audience. I love that dream. Yes. And I love hearing you talk about it. There's so much uh, magic and joy that you want to bring to recipes and planning what's for dinner and sharing these things. And that definitely plays true across your website and, and in this conversation. Thanks. Do you have any advice for others setting out on their entrepreneurial journey or um, other things that are on your mind? Yeah, um, I think, you know, a couple of things. Um, you know, first, I think you have to kind of do all of the research that you can before jumping in. I think you have to go into it with open eyes. Um, you know, not saying that like you will really know or understand. I mean, it's it's a huge risk, right? But like just finding out all you can before you take that plunge. Once you've committed to doing that, then you have to stop listening to people. <laughs> so it's like, listen all you can. And then at some point, just like stop listening. And what I mean by that is because... Um, you know, like, especially like in the market that I was talking about, um, I mean, anybody who uh, thought about the, the chances for success and the risks, like, you wouldn't do it, you know, um, because like, it, the odds are really stacked against you, <laughs> I think, in any uh, business start of a business venture. And so I think um, once you have your vision, and you're committed to that vision, then you really have to single mindedly just focus on that vision and focus on making that work. And then you have to just block out the noise around you because there are so many people who will tell you why your idea isn't going to work or, you know, why why things aren't are going to pan out the way you think. And so um, I think it's a combination of those things. Like we'll call it strategic listening. <laughs> strategic listening. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You have things to execute on. You don't have time to be distracted by the... Absolutely. And also, like, I was just um, really um, surprised a little bit by the amount of naysaying that you encounter, too, you know. Um, and so that's been a really amazing exercise. And it's, you know, like, you really have to, um, you know, believe in yourself and your idea. Um, and, you know, once you're there, you go for it. 
go for it. I love that message. Thank you so much for being here, Diane. It's exciting to uh, hear about anchovy on this journey. And uh, check it out at anchovy.app. It's live in the app stores. And Absolutely. Yeah, people can follow along there. Um, thank you very much. Again, this is the Business L&K podcast. Thanks for listening.